Hello everyone. Hi, good morning to all of you. I am Roslita from Excel Academy and I am your host for today. Thank you for joining us in the last webinar session for this training, National Training Week. Today, we will be with uh, Mr. Iskandar Daniel for another interesting topic. Social media ads that don't break the bank maximize impact with minimum spend. Okay, so if you have any question regarding this topic, do leave your question in the comment section and Mr. Iskandar will answer them right after his presentation. Also, don't forget to fill out the output assessment provided in the comment section. Uh, kindly fill out all your contact details accordingly as e-certificate will only be given to those who have completed the form. All right, so let's not wait anymore. Now I pass this floor to Mr. Iskandar. Hi, 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 thank you, Kat Rose, for giving me this opportunity to share with all of you. Right, I'll just take a moment to share my screen. Yeah. Give me a moment. Right. So, hi, everyone. Um, I hope you can see my screen. And well, we are now today here to basically have a session on sharing how for you to not break your bank and maximize impact with minimum spend, right? Because the topic names is social media ads that don't break the bank, maximize impact with minimum spend workshop, yeah? Well, uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, all of Excel Academy team members for inviting me over this National Training Week, NTW. Uh, and well, today I just have only one hour to share with you and I hope that it's going to be an impactful one hour, yeah? So ladies and gentlemen, before I start, let me first introduce a bit of myself. My name is Iskandar Daniel, and uh, let's put aside being a trainer. I am a young entrepreneur, meaning that I've been in, uh, well, uh, me myself is doing business, and I have businesses in multiple industries that includes in healthcare, uh, F&B, uh, automotive, and so on, inclusive of IT. Well, when we are talking about training, or uh, coaching, I've been involved with a lot of government agencies, GLCs, MNCs, that includes uh, MBAG, uh, Maybank, uh, PSN, and so, and, and so on. Well, but that's not about me. Um, today, it's all about you, how you can save a lot of money to maximize your ads impact with minimum spend. And ladies and gentlemen, it's going to be just three tips that you as a business owner might know or might not know. And even if you know, you might have ignored these uh, foundations. Yeah. So these three tips to maximize impact with minimum spend, and we are going to uncover the obvious secrets behind maximizing impact with minimum spend. Let's go with the first one. Right. The first one is choosing the more significant market segment. And I always found out that a lot of people are romanticizing and also obsessive with the words of niche, just like Malaysians are abusive towards the, the word of healing. Yeah. So basically, ladies and gentlemen, niche is good, but it is also bad if you wrongly use it. If you wrongly understand the meaning of niche, then you might have uh, you might have the problem of getting a less significant results. So let me first introduce to you about market size and why I say that you should not be someone who is obsessive towards the word of niche. So ladies and gentlemen, when you choose your market segmentation, yeah, you need to identify your market size so this is uh, the market size yeah this is the market size you need to first identify the outer circle the outer circle yeah the black circle which is the total available market yeah called as tam so total available market meaning that the whole market that is able to buy your product okay so once you have identified the total available market, say for instance, 
in Malaysia we have 32 million uh, population but does everyone or, or is uh, I mean can everyone buy your product definitely no right so such as uh, people such as babies okay or or maybe your product is not suitable for people who have some disease yeah so you need to subtract that and then you get the numbers that is available to buy your product right however due to some limitations such as geographics demographics yeah or maybe financial or maybe technological yeah then you need to know who are those available market that you can service we call that as service able available market right say for instance you are based in Kedah okay and maybe because your company is quite new or maybe you do not have the financial capability yet that you can only service those who are in Kedah okay so definitely when we are talking about the population of Malaysia uh, we are talking about huge numbers but again due to your limitation there are only certain areas that you could cover therefore the market shrinks yeah? it becomes even smaller and last but not least in those service able available market yeah say you have the numbers oh i have identified in kedah i can service 200000 of people okay however in that particular industry there are also other players right so meaning that the market share is at 200000 so you need to know what are the market share that you can obtain yeah that you can obtain from the service able available market say from 200000 or maybe this 200000 uh, we can we can we can uh, capture around 10% so it means that it's 20000 people that you can obtain right so what is the problem with niching in okay so what happens if you're obsessive towards finding the niche it is like this yeah let's see on the left hand side this is how big the market should be right how big the market should be but when you niche it down the more you niche it down the more you make it more detailed right it becomes smaller and smaller and smaller therefore the market shrinks directly proportional to its potential review uh, revenue yeah so you see the bigger the market is right the bigger possibilities for you to generate revenue right okay but the smaller the market is right the smaller the potential revenue is yeah okay so you see the market and also the potential revenue it's directly proportional so it's a it's a straight line okay if it goes up the bigger the market is the bigger the potential revenue is okay however if the market becomes smaller therefore the potential revenue becomes smaller yeah okay so now ladies and gentlemen when you have done with choosing the more significant market segment okay you know which one is your main market segment okay then you need to find the problems for each of the segment so when we are talking about the first one it's not about uh, it's not about uh, choosing only one segment yeah but it's about choosing the better segments so that you know where your priority is right and definitely in business right we have multiple uh, market segments that we need to cater and all these different market segments are significant yeah are significant so all those insignificant uh, market segments, we we try to ignore it first because the numbers are not that uh, are not that um, I would say not that worthy, can it's not that worthy for you to spend your time, spend your resources to capture that small number uh, of market, right? Therefore, when you have identified the the significant market segments say you have two or three 
then you need to find the problem okay the problem statement for each of the uh, of the segment see different segments have their own different problems and your product your product might be one of the solution to address different problems okay however when you have multiple segments you will also find out that this, the problems might be similar yeah when you are doing your research or your study you might find out that the problem is almost similar there are chances that it happens right but that's not a problem okay so this is how it would be if you have multiple segments okay we break it down first okay contoh market 1 market 1 yeah for executive workforce okay for this one okay is the real example on what i did uh, when i was selling uh, microsoft excel digital product okay so this is what i did so i've broken down to three segments okay market 1 market 2 and market 3 yeah market 1 market 2 and market 3 and for my market 1 i have the numbers but i'm not showing here okay is the executive the workforce executive level meaning that people who are working and at executive level right and my second market segment are those who are retrenched and unemployed and my, my market three are parents are the parents who have children in higher education okay and this is what i did so i talked to my customer i talked to my potential customers and i asked them what is the problem that they are facing in their career or about you know uh about the current layout okay so i talked to the first uh, market they said that it's hard for them to get a bigger salary okay it's hard for them to get a bigger salary and some of them also mentioned that when they entered the uh, when they entered the company okay when they entered the company together with their friend okay uh, masuk sama-sama lah okay some of their friends are in a higher position they are promoted but they are still at their current level yeah and last but not least is the is the problem where they are afraid that one day they might be retrenched okay due to maybe due to the age or due to uh, a higher compact uh, competitiveness with uh the retrench and unemployed okay so these are the problems that the market number one is facing okay so i just jot down okay this is what you said i do not invalidate okay i do not invalidate what they are saying because that is the problem that they are facing okay so we just write it down write it down more and more and more and more okay there's a lot more okay there's a lot more right so then i pick up my phone and started calling to identify the problem that the market two is facing okay the market two is those who are retrenched and unemployed okay so i talked to them okay they said that you know we really want to find a job okay and it is hard for them to get a job okay but that's not the real problem the real problem is that it's hard to get a job so that they can live comfortably or stable lah kan uh, every month dapat gaji so they are stable okay another problem that they are facing is that gig chances uh, apa muka chances gig punya uh, job uh, gig of financing jobs okay are not always available are not always available See, if you're a graphic designer, it's hard for you to compete with uh, a lot of freelancers, okay? And then a lot of uh, company who's, who uh, does the service of uh, graphic design, can. But if you're talking about uh, just 
a normal like contoh grab ke lala move then that might be uh, okay slightly okay okay but it's not worth it sebab you have the skills but you don't know where to place it okay and ended up you drive you ride your motor and send food kan so it's a waste of talent kan okay so these are the problems that the market number two is facing okay so i just jot down okay so this is what you say again do not invalidate what they are saying because at the end of the day it is their problem that we want to solve it is not our problem that we want to solve kan <laughs> okay and last but not least is the market number three okay so at first i wanted to target those university students but when i think it hard university students they are living in the moment they are living in the moment where you know uh, they are enjoying their life they are happy with their friends some of them are being in love then uh, so they are living in the moment they are not they are not a uh, majority of them they do not think ahead like what lies in the future okay what should i do uh, to to get more competitive uh in the market when i finish up my study scan or when i graduate therefore i shifted the market to the parents who have children studying in higher education okay so i called these parents okay i called these parents said uh makcik boleh tak saya tahu kan anak makcik kan belajar university okay so what are you afraid of what is the problem that you ask cat most of okay so they said that oh i am so worried lah if my son or my daughter when they graduated they could not find any job so that is what they are afraid of okay and there's also another problem which is oh i pity them lah they they might not get a job okay so different it's two different thing one is about pity one is about worrying so these are the problems that they are facing so again we just jot it down okay so what's next okay tips number three okay it's very short but later we will talk about how to get the successful campaigns running i'll show you the examples you know what i did uh, and number three is to deliver the right message eh, or the right solution by choosing the more significant problem so if number two right it's all about finding and identifying the problems so we just hear what the customer wants to say and we just jot it down okay but number three is to choose which one is the more significant problem okay uh, the more uh, crucial problem okay because in our life some problems are just ah tak apalah this is just small matter kan but some problem are also about hidup atau mati okay and it shows that some problems are just too small okay or small that we can still ignore but some problems are too big okay are too big to be considered if we do not want to regret it later right uh, so in our life it's always like that but the problem that most business owners and most junior and also senior digital marketers did is that oh we have a problem to solve okay straight away find the solution try to find a solution for that problem that might be too small for you to solve okay so that is the main problem that the digital marketers are doing okay however you 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 join this uh, session today now you know how to make or, or how to uh, be more uh, i would say to get your uh, to choose your problem okay that is more significant to be solved okay so that you do not waste your time you do not waste your resource and you do not waste your definitely the first thing is about your money your bucks right okay nanti run iklan tak dapat results yang bagus okay then you waste your money or you run iklan tapi the um, 
the cost is even higher. The X cost is even higher than your profit margin. Okay, so that's what we don't want. Okay, so like I said, what they said, we just jot it down. Jot, 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 jot down. Okay, then you choose the right, okay, the right solution for the crucial problem. So you need to first choose the crucial problem again. Okay, so how do you choose? Okay, all these red color uh, font is all the crucial or significant problem. Okay, so how do I choose this? Okay, so I talk to the customer. Okay, I talk to the potential customer. I said, among all these, uh, among all these problems that you mentioned to me, okay, which one, yang you nak selesaikan dulu? Which one do, uh, which one, uh, which is uh which one that you want to solve it first okay so they said that okay first dia patah balik kepada nombor tiga dulu takut kena buang kerja it's very hard for me to to get uh replaced okay there are some chances but very minimal so this is the least likely to happen or the least like the least that i am thinking of okay then goes to the second one. Kawan-kawan lain dah naik pangkat tapi belum, uh, tapi dia belum lagi. Okay. All other friends has been promoted in other companies from exec to manager or from exec to supervisor ke, you know, all those uh, sort of things. Okay. But they might get promoted. Okay. They might be the manager in ABC Engineering Senior Berhad. Okay. But I am still executive in Petronas Cari Gali Senior Berhad. And I own more. Uh, I earn more than them. Okay, I earn more than them. So that's not a problem as well. I mean, that's a problem, but not that big, lah. Okay, right. But the main problem is that, okay, I do not, I do not earn much. Okay, and it's hard for me to get any increment. Okay, maybe ada lah like increment tiga percent ke lima percent ke. I don't know. Okay, but it's hard for them lah. Takkan tiga percent, five percent. Bila ni nak tambah banyak kan, right? So, that's the main problem. Okay, that's the main problem. So, I highlighted it. Okay, susah dapat gaji besar. Okay, alright, sure, sure. Same goes to the market number two. Okay, ada dua masalah. Okay, ada dua masalah. But, I ask them, which one is the more significant problem? So, this it. Oh, yang peluang gig freelancing tak selalu ada. Okay, he's a designer. Okay. So, tak selalu ada. That's fine. Okay. Worst come to worst, I can still do grab or lala move. Okay. But, it is not stable. Regardless, it's grab ke, it's lala move ke, or food panda ke. Okay. It is not stable. And if one day, say, I am... Uh, I am involved in an accident. Okay. So what happens to my life? What happens to my family? So that is what they're afraid of. Therefore, the main problem would be susah dapat kerja untuk hidup stabil. Uh, what they wanted is that to be stable. If they are involved in an accident, they are covered with um, compensations that are good. Uh, I would say that is not, not to say enough. But to say a good compensation, okay. Apart from that, when they are working, if they are working, let's say if they are working in certain uh, industries, okay. Even though they are involved in accidents, once they once they have recovered, okay, they can still work in that particular position, okay. However, when it comes to gig, uh, gig of freelancing, they might not have the second chance to work again in that industry, yeah. Okay, same goes to the market number three. These parents, yeah, these parents who have children in uh, studying in higher education. Okay, kesian dekat anak is sangat-sangat kecil. The problem is so small. Okay, but what they are afraid of is that dia takut anak dia habis belajar once his son or his daughter graduated but couldn't get a job. Okay, to, to tell you the truth, some of them are worried about this because of they are really worried about their children some of them 
they are not that worried about their children but they are worried that mana nak letak muka aku dia kata okay uh, they wanted to see face Okay, when they meet their friends, oh, my son is working in Petronas, my son is working in Maybank, my daughter is working in CIMB, you know. That's what they wanted to tell their friends. But if they tell their friends that, oh, my son is still unemployed, so they couldn't save their face. Lah, okay? However, that one is the niche problem, but we just wanted to know the larger problem is that they are afraid their son or daughter, their children, once they have graduated, they couldn't find any jobs. Okay, so now I know what are the problems that needed to be solved. I know which one is the most significant problem. Therefore, these are the example of the successful campaigns. Like I mentioned, I was selling Microsoft Excel. Okay, I was selling Microsoft Excel, a digital product. Okay, a pre-recorded video. So we recorded the video, right? Only once. And then we turn it into a product, we sell it. Okay. So you see, these are some of the successful campaign. I will, I will tell you, uh, right after this, I will tell you how much I earn from this particular product. Okay. Right. So these are the uh, some of the example uh, of the successful campaigns. Yeah. The market number one, you see, the problem is what? Susah dapat gaji besar. So, susah betul nak dapat gaji besar. So, relate it to your solution. Upgrade skill Microsoft Excel anda. This macam tu je, okay? Uh, of course, when you agitate later on in your copywriting, you need to showcase to them how does Microsoft Excel can relate to dapatkan gaji besar. Maybe you can be more efficient, you can solve... Uh, you can solve the Excel sheet rather than eight hour. You can solve it within 30 minutes. Can. So when you are more efficient, you can do more jobs. Your boss might be paying you more. Okay, maybe an increment is there. Okay. So these are for the executive level of working people. Okay. Market number two. Susah nak dapat kerja, belajar lah Microsoft Excel. It's this easy. But people don't know. Okay, susah nak dapat kerja belajar dalam Microsoft Excel. It, again, in your copywriting, during uh, when you want to agitate, okay, or exaggerate the problem, okay, you need to relate Microsoft Excel and susah nak dapat kerja. Okay, so how? When you have the skill of Microsoft Excel, perhaps, okay, that might be the competitive advantage that you have compared to your competitors or the other candidates okay so this serves for the retrenched or unemployed okay and last but not least is the market number three which is which is okay the parents who have children in higher education right so ladies and gentlemen Senang je kan? Kesian tengok anak susah dapat kerja. Huh. Okay. Takut anak. Kesian dekat anak. Ini kesian saja. Okay, ini takut. Okay. So, I masuk kan? Kesian tengok anak susah dapat kerja. Beli panduan video tutorial Microsoft Excel untuk mereka. During exaggeration ataupun agitation. Okay. You tekan lebih mendalam. What you do is that. You letaklah macam you want to see face. When you are meeting your friend. Okay. Or maybe one day if you're gone, what will happen to your daughter? Okay, if they don't have any jobs because the current uh, the current uh, landscape of uh, uh, apa ni, permanent job is getting more competitive than ever post COVID nineteen, can so a lot of things that you can put it in, yeah. So these are the example of the successful campaigns. Okay, and these are the examples of failed campaigns. Eh? These are the examples of failed campaigns. Right? So, tengok. It's too niche. Nampak tak? Anda engineer, jom belajar Excel untuk budgeting the cost saving project. And this is what most uh, digital marketer would do. Anda seorang engineer, are you an engineer? 
Jom belajar Excel okay, so that you can do budgeting and cost saving project. So that is what I thought. Okay. So when I first started, these are those uh, posters that have been launched. Okay. And com comparatively, okay, from the successful campaigns, the cost per purchase is so different. This one, the cost for cost per purchase is somewhere around uh, 20 plus. Okay, all these three lah, 20, 30 plus. But this one goes up to 70 to 120 per purchase. So definitely I couldn't make money because I'm selling at 97 and 127. Okay, and these are the, uh, the failed campaigns. Okay, that is due to you shrink your, you shrink your market. Okay, your market. When you see, we are talking about here, can okay, executive workforce. Some people they like to niche it down into okay, executive level, engineers, executive level, say, um, uh, accountant, uh, executive level of that particular niche, you will shrink your market, can okay. So, again, it comes back to the market size, right? Therefore, you think about it, it doesn't work. This one. Okay, these are the example for me. Okay, for me, my experience. Okay, these are the field campaigns because of niche, right? So rather than focusing on particular or engineer lah, accountant lah, and so on lah, you can do that. Definitely, you can do that. But you you still need to see the market size. If it's too small, if your total available market is already too small, then you do not need to find out what's your service able available market or service able obtainable market because the numbers would be very 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 small okay and therefore you are wasting your resources okay you are spending you will spend a lot just to capture a very small number of people okay ah uh, sebab itulah your cost per lead becomes higher your cost per purchase becomes higher okay uh, because you are being too niche. Okay, that's the first problem yang a lot of digital marketer they ignore. Okay, it's either they, they don't know or they ignore. So, in the whole marketing landscape, okay, uh, I'm doing my doctorate currently, okay, in the whole marketing landscape, if you know how to click on ads, okay, a lot of people also know how to click on ads. Okay, so what makes you a good digital marketer? is that the foundation, the studies that you do in order for you to produce a campaign. So that what makes you different than those people who can only click on X. Okay. You might so good in technical. Oh, we can, we, we can set this, uh, you know, uh, for those who, uh, who went into our website but not purchased, we can retarget them. But all of that would be useless if the foundation is weak, right? So just to share with you, ladies and gentlemen, okay, this is the results, okay, that we got um, when we sell the Microsoft Excel product, okay? Although the graph showing that it's declining, okay? But that's fine, okay? For me, as a business owner, I only spent once, which is to record, okay, and to edit the video. I paid only once. And while I'm sitting, money is still coming in. So across these five months, okay, across these five months, these are the number that we got. Okay, as a side gig, I think this is a good number, 484,615, okay? You need to bear in mind, my only cost would be the X cost, okay? And on the first month, we reached 250,000, okay? Uh, it's just that I'm too comfortable that I don't want to look at the, uh, apa ni? the iklan anymore, eh? the ads anymore, all right? So this is what happens, lah. this is what happens, okay? So ladies and gentlemen, again, I would like to recap. The first thing that you should do would be to choose the more significant market segment. You can have 20 market segments, 
okay but you can choose maybe five maybe one maybe three okay market segment that is significant the numbers that is big okay so how to do that is for you to identify the market size make sure the total available market is big enough okay and then find out uh, the numbers that you can service okay and the numbers that you can obtain yeah right so next would be number two right finding the problem uh, statements okay sorry problem statements for each segments okay talk to your customer uh, the, the market that you have chosen the market segments that you have chosen okay try to talk to potential customer to understand okay, to understand what is their problem list it down do not invalidate okay do not invalidate okay so just jot it down whatever they say just jot down jot down jot down jot down jot down Okay, and then barulah masukkan yang ketiga. Then you go to number three. Okay, delivering the right message by choosing the most significant problem. So, before you deliver the right message, you need to choose the most significant problem. Okay. Now, from the from the notes that you have, jot down. Okay. Then you ask them back. Okay, among these four problems, among these five problems. Okay, which one is more significant? Okay. Let them justify why this is just uh, why this is more significant and why the other four or the other three is less significant. Okay, and then you deliver the right solution to the more significant problem, just like what I did. Okay, it's very easy. Okay, you do not have to think. Okay, so a lot of digital marketer, oh, what should what shall we write in our copywriting? What shall we uh, put in our poster? Okay. That is not your job to predict. Okay, that is not your job to predict. You are, I mean, we as digital marketer, we are not God. <laughs> we are not God, so it's hard for us to predict. So rather than predicting, you talk to your customer, then you get your your collaterals ready, copywriting ready, your apa ni? your um your poster pun dah ready okay then you just straight away sell okay and last but not least before i conclude the session uh, before we open up for faq okay again please remember this carefully you can screenshot okay you can uh, jot down these are the example of the field campaigns by what i mean fail it's either two whether the profit margin has been eclipsed by the uh, ads cost or it can also be, it can also mean that you are still profitable, but your cost per lead, your CPL, or your cost per purchase CPP might be even higher compared to the other campaigns, right? So, um, without further ado, can we open up the floor for FAQ, perhaps? Team XR Academy, can we open up the floor for FAQ? All right. Yeah, all right. Thank you so much, um, Mr. Skanda, for the great and informative sharing. Also, thank you everyone for joining our webinar session for today. And uh, if you have any questions, you can drop them now. Let's wait a bit uh, for the question, yeah? Okay, I, I guess we do not have any questions for today. Uh, I really hope everyone have gained a lot of insights uh, from today's session yeah, by Mr. Iskandar. And as shown on the screen right now, sorry, I think there's one question coming in. Yeah. Okay. Just 
Kanna, you have one question? Okay, sure. Okay, sure. Uh, can you hear my voice? Sorry? Yeah. Okay, we have a question from Sharmila. We have a, we have a question from uh, Miss Sharmila. Which channel are effective at advertising and how much did you spend on your campaigns? Okay, that's a very good question. Okay, I've tested uh, all those uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, LinkedIn, and also Google Ads. Uh, for my product, one of my, okay, let, let's just uh, talk about the Microsoft Excel product. Eh? Okay, I've tested all the channels available. And this is my findings. The most um, reliable would be Facebook ads together with Instagram ads. Okay, that is uh, more reliable. Twitter ads, I've ran the, the campaign for two weeks. The first week, I had good sales. And the second week, I am at loss. LinkedIn ads are not that um, effective and same goes to uh, Google Ads. Maybe it's because of my product. It doesn't suit um, the advertising channel, those people who are in the channel, right? And how much did I spend on my campaign? That's a very good question. Okay, let's talk about being, let's talk about the minimal amount, okay? So if I were to start any of my campaign before I scaled it up, I started with 60 ringgit, okay, 60 ringgit, 60 ringgit. So once I once I the X is showing good numbers, okay, then I will increase it. And usually I don't mind on spending per day for one product per day up to 4,000 ringgit. I don't mind doing that okay, because I did that before. Okay. So it depends if the ad campaign, when you spend the, the first 60 ringgit, you see that the results are good then you can scale it up. So it just means that you, you will multiply the number. Okay. So let's say number ringgit, you get two purchase and you have, uh, and the product uh, uh, price is maybe say for instance, 120 each. So you are spending 60 ringgit, you're getting 240. So the easy way to understand how this works is that if you scale it up to 600 ringgit, you might get sales of 2,400. So these, these are the, the uh, minimal amount that I will spend, 60 ringgit, but I don't mind spending 4,000 ringgit per day because I am doing that. Okay, next, maybe, uh, next question, maybe, perhaps? Kat Ross? Yeah. Okay. I sir, sir, ada example problem statements kat untuk produk ni. Ah, tadi saya dah bagi dah problem statement. Ah, tadi saya dah bagi, dekat dalam tu saya tulis, okay? Uh, saya ada tulis, apa problem yang customer hadapi, okay? Uh, nanti awak check balik, nanti tengok balik video ni Ada banyak problem kan? Tak semua ada banyak problem so we just list it down Yeah? Okay, okay next, next one, one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How to do research for significant segment? Okay, this one is a good question Okay, so what I did usually Okay, I, I go to statista.com Okay, or I go to Department of Statistic Malaysia Okay, I go to these two websites or I can find any other reference from journals or articles. Okay, so this is very important for you to do. Okay, you might not get the accurate number, but you will get, uh, you, you might get a closer insight to how big the market is. Okay, so again, Department of Statistics Mission, DOSM. Okay, okay. Uh, DOSM, Department of Statistics Malaysia. Okay and also statista.com okay if you couldn't find uh, from these two websites you can find from any journals or articles okay and when i say journals or articles it's not the blogger yang write the blog eh? <laughs> okay right so yeah uh, so that's what i did lah okay that's what i did all right next question boleh um, yeah, yeah okay. next one Okay, another question from Miss Shamila. Can you advise how I can reach customers <coughs> in Indonesia to FB and Insta? Oh, okay. Good one. How can you reach them is through um, the location setting. Okay, the location setting. You can choose uh, Indonesia. Okay, you can choose Indonesia and please make sure that before you set the location, on top of it, there are options. 
people who are living in, people who are recently in. So you choose people who are living in Indonesia. Okay. So if you choose people who are living in or recently in this location, you might get uh, Indonesians who are working in Malaysia or Malaysians who recently went to Indonesia and come back to Malaysia. Okay. So make sure you put in Indonesia as your location and please exclude the neighboring region. Say for instance, Malaysia uh, and, and other uh, neighboring regions. Yeah. Okay. Ada lagi satu. Atika Hazir. Okay. Hi, sir. Could you provide one example of problem statement from this innovative product? Stingless honey. Okay. That is um, stingless honey. It's stingless honey. What is stingless honey? Okay, let me just do one minute of me. Okay. A type of honey produced by small bees that do not sting. Okay. So, there are the high water content that makes it more liquid and prone to fermentation. It has a sweet and sour taste with a hint of fruit. Okay. Right. So, it's going to be very nutritious. Okay. Right. This is my input. Okay. Uh, I'm just sharing my input based on a marketer uh, madu kelulut lah. Okay, madu kelulut. Okay. I'm sharing my point of view as a marketer. Eh? Okay. So, I have a lot of friends yang doing millions every month. Okay. And this is what they do. You you have two choice. The first one, you overclaim your product. Okay. Second is that you tunggang agama. Okay, so although this is immoral, but this is successful in our business scene. Okay, so I'm telling you that these are those two things that people buat. Okay, they overclaim their product or they tunggal agama, masukkan sedikit tentang sunnah dan sebagainya. Okay. So, contohnya problem statement, okay, sakit lutut ke, sakit jantung ke, you know, alright, uh, sakit. Dia, dia macam ni, biasanya orang yang beli honey ni semua, they are very health conscious. So, actually, it's either two. They are afraid of death or they are afraid of sick. Okay, so you exaggerate more on this problem. Okay. Again, ini I stereotyping. You need to call them and ask them. Okay, you need to call them and ask them. Singles Honey. Okay. Ada lagi. Boleh, boleh. Dua soalan ni eh. Boleh, tak ada masalah. Okay. Can you give us example uh, for education copywriting that are most suitable to approach and raise and awareness to people? Okay. Uh, I'm a consultant for UTM, uh, University Technology Malaysia. Okay. So, semudah-mudahnya untuk education is that you need to understand your customer segment. You see, when you are targeting Malay, Okay, you're targeting Malays. Your copywriting is still in English. Malays are comfortable dalam bahasa Melayu. Sama juga when I did for my um, Microsoft Excel. I tried in English. But comparatively, in bahasa Malaysia, is much more effective. So, you can have both. English, Malay, or you can even have more than that. Okay, Mandarin and Tamil. Uh, so, at, contoh education copywriting, you can just write what, what you are doing is okay. But you need to make sure that the message sampai ke customer. Okay, message sampai to the customer. I boleh tulis, nanti I can tolong you. Okay, I have examples that I did for um, ni lah, my, my client. I can give it to you. Okay, right, I can give it to you. So, All right. next one please. Yeah, last one I think, Kashfil Shami. Kashfil Shami, from your table chart that you show, I nampak dia di di kisi. <laughs> what is your strategy on that? Can you share your insight? Okay. Terima kasih for this soalan. Okay, I am very thankful for this question. Okay, you see, the first thing I mentioned was about the market size. Okay, so I have identified that my current product, it has reached almost at the ceiling. Almost at the ceiling. So, what my strategy, what, what's my next move is that although the product is evergreen, the market needs to be regenerated. I need to wait six months to one year time for those who are in, uh, for those who have not graduated, okay, 
for those who are still in SPM and they are moving towards higher education, for those who are still in the job, okay, waiting to be retrenched, and then I rerun my marketing. That's why the first thing I mentioned to you was about the market size. The market segment, identify the market size. That's why I am not uncomfortable with the amount because I know I've reached the ceiling. I need to just wait my time. Okay, so this there are two ways. Pertama, I tunggu. Kedua adalah, I open up to another market which is going to Indonesia or going to Vietnam or so on. Okay, but again, it, it involves effort. I can do that, but for now, I'm not looking at that yet because I still have other business to uh, focus on. I hope that answers your question, Shafiq, uh, Katril. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Thank you for all the questions here. Yeah? Hope every one of you gained a lot of insight from today's session. All right. Um, as shown on the screen right now, these are our upcoming public courses. So if you are interested in any of these courses, please contact us for more details or to register. Also, don't forget to fill out the output assessment provided in the comment section uh, because e-certificate will only be given to those who have completed the form. Okay, so with that, um, we'll see you again next time. Thank you and goodbye everyone. Thank you, Mr. Iskandar. Thank you, Carlos. Yeah.